technologically complex process uh, uh, with a very important social dimension, of course, because television, analog, terrestrial television coverage in Spain was 98.5% of the population. And in less than five years, we have achieved not just digital television coverage, analog television, in fact, we've achieved universal coverage because all citizens have now got access to terrestrial digital television, either through the terrestrial signal, 98.5%, or via satellite, uh, the remaining 1.5%, the ones who are uh, in really uh, difficult places to reach. Let me quickly give you some numbers about the, this project that I just mentioned. Citizens have had to change aerial on more than 25 million houses. They've bought more than 28 million decoders or um, modernized uh, television sets. Almost 5,000 broadcasting centers have been digitalized. More than 3,000 meetings were held with town halls and with uh, citizens. More than 10 million leaflets were distributed. And more than 10,000 companies uh, employing more than 40,000 people were uh, involved in the process. What we were aiming at in this whole process then was to uh, carry out an undertaking which was one of the major successes of the program uh, within the deadlines and explaining to people that digitalization was important and that the proper use of the spectrum was also important. There are lots of examples in Europe of joint action which represent uh, important developments for European industry and for, and for international action. The, the recent example of, uh, of GSM and the previous agreements uh, uh, to that as well, which are other examples. Now we don't have to do everything new uh, each time. Things have been done before, perhaps uh, with a slightly more relaxed timing in the past, but this time round we can't afford to be relaxed. We have to move fast. And I'm sure that uh, with everyone's efforts, uh, and certainly with Parliament's and the Commission's efforts, uh, having heard from Commissioner Cruz, I'm sure we'll be able to do that. With our modest contribution from the, the Spanish Presidency uh, of the Council, these few months uh, we shall be doing that. Uh, and of course then we'll be cooperating with future presidencies as well as with the Commission and the Parliament. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your very, very interesting contribution to uh, the discussion, Mr. Francisco Ross Peran. Yesterday we had uh, two workshops going on and the workshop's discussion will now have a summary and first uh, by Mr. Philippe Defren. I give you the floor. Thank you, Chairman. I have the difficult task of uh, wrapping up what was said yesterday in the first workshop on uh, spectrum strategy and economic recovery and social inclusion. I think that the first takeaway uh, of, of this workshop is that, as it's too often believed, spectrum policy is not just a battle between broadcasters and telecom. 
There are many other stakeholders, and yesterday we heard them. We heard about the Internet of Things. We heard the police calling for a dedicated spectrum. We heard about the 4 million wireless microphone essential for European cultural life. We heard that more spectrum is needed for renewable sources of energy. We heard that America, for example, dedicate much more spectrum on public safety than we do. And that's just to name a few. I've not tried to be exhaustive here. By the way, talking about America, I think that we see a lot of uh, benchmarks of uh, Europe versus America and Asia when it comes, for example, to things like uh, fixed broadband, mobile broadband. We don't see much, much benchmark on spectrum. I think this is something that we should, we should do more, more often. Uh, on the top of that, looking at uh, the contenders for spectrum, uh, it is of course also clear that uh, delivery of high-speed internet in rural areas and social inclusion will probably mean more spectrum for the mobile community. And finally, we were reminded that uh, while the allocation of UF, UHF spectrum to DTT is sometimes seen as a waste of valuable resource, they nevertheless deliver uh, TV to 75 million households and increasingly in, in HD. So that's for the contenders. Uh, well, I, I must confess that at times the, the debate must have appeared a bit unstructured, but when I, when I looked at my notes last time, I, I realized after some efforts that uh, actually the topics felt quite nicely under the major themes of the Europe 2020 uh, agenda. Um, delivering a smart, sustainable and inclusive growth. And if I start with growth, I think the key message from yesterday is that Europe is no longer on the lead when it comes to economies of scale. In, in many sectors, and it's true for mobile telephone, but it's true for many other things like smart grid, for example, the European market is no longer the biggest market in the world. In, in many respects, we are small. So if we don't harmonize, if we don't act as a single market, we will definitely uh, lag behind. And this was echoed by, by many speakers. Uh, to quote a few, a few MEPs.